that I have for you. We're so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Most of all, God, we're grateful for your grace. Father God, we pray that your presence be in this place, and she will have your way in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray your blessing upon the pastor and the leader of this shop. Pray that you continue to bless him and his family to continue on in your name. Father God, then we pray for your preach word today, God. We ask your anointing rest upon the speaker of the hour. Give him an encouraging word that we may continue on in your name. In Jesus' precious name, we thank you. We bless your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
to our pastor's anniversary celebration. It looks a little different this year because of the pandemic and we cannot celebrate like we want to celebrate. So we try to um, make some things a little special for you, Pastor. Um, we had a couple of surprises. Unfortunately, one young lady, she fell ill, so she was going to praise dance for you. Um, so we're going to do that at a later date. But right now, we're going to offer some congratulatory words to you. Just to let you know how much we love you, we appreciate you, we appreciate you guys, the first family, and we appreciate the work that you do here at the church. Thank you. Reverend B.O.B., man, I remember when you first became a pastor and I used to tell you, stop using me in your sermons. This is your testimony, not mine. But as the years have gone by, I want to let you know how proud I am of the man of God you become. And please, by all means, continue uh, filling your flock with everything that God has in store for them. Happy anniversary, brother. Greetings, this is Pastor Hinton. I just wanted to drop in uh, to congratulate Pastor and First Lady Simpson on 17 years of pastoral ministry. Yep, that's right. 17 years of praying, 17 years of preaching, 17 years of leadership, but most of all, 17 years of service. Pastor Simpson, you know how I feel about you. I love you. Uh, you are a dear friend of mine, and I thank you for allowing God to uh, allow you to be an asset to our community. Continue to do what you do just like you do, man. God is using you in a great way. Peace and blessings be multiplied unto you. Well, good morning, Pastor and First Lady Simpson. Uh, let me first of all say happy anniversary. Um, it gives me a great deal of pride to sit here today and know that I've had a first-hand seat or first-row seat, if you will, to watch you guys grow from four young wild kids in your 20s to the fantastic people that you become today, the great parents you become, the husband and wife that you become, and the past and first lady that you become. Uh, extremely proud of you guys. Um, on a personal note, I want to say to Bob, I'm glad that you decided to pick up the game of golf so that we have a common hobby that we can play well into our 90s because we have good genes, which means we're going to live a long time. Uh, unfortunately, your body wasn't as strong as mine and you couldn't uh, hang on to play basketball like I still can. Once again, guys, happy anniversary. Wishing you guys a lot more. Uh, have a great day. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. That was the rest of the family. Of course, Kendra's members left in college, but that was Kendra and Carol. Happy anniversary, guys. Hello, this is Reverend Curtis Lucas, pastor of the Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church here in Richmond, Texas. We are the church located in the heart of the community with the community at heart. What a wonderful time of the year when the congregation, family, friends can celebrate um, the giving of our pastor for all the things that he's done uh, during this year and years before. I'm thankful to express my admiration for Pastor Bob. He is a very fortunate to have uh, a wonderful and beautiful uh, congregation as well as a beautiful family to go home to. Thank you for allowing me a moment to show my admiration uh, for your pastor. Allow me to cite one of my favorite poems with a del uh, deliberate intent of uh, encouraging you to ask life for all that you need. This is the way it goes. I bargain with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged that evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask, but once you have set the wages, why, you must bear the task. I work for a menial hire only to learn dismayed that any wage I had asked of life, life would have willingly paid. With best wishes, believe me. Reverend Curtis 
Ray Lucas. Hey, Pastor and First Lady, we wanted to congratulate you on another year of service in the ministry. We really, really appreciate your friendship and your inspiration. You have a magnetic effect on being able to draw people closer to you and to God. Yes, thank you all so much just for all that you do, um, the influence, the friendship, the mentoring, uh, just all that. We're just grateful to have y'all in our lives and appreciative of the relationship. So God bless y'all uh, and God keep y'all. We love you. Love y'all guys.
Simpson family, we thank you all for whatever you do for us is greatly appreciated. God has been so tremendously wonderful for us and to us, and it's just been a blessing. And so, Morgan, would you come and give a, a thanks on behalf of the family? Amen. Morgan, will come and give a thanks on behalf of the family. Amen. Great morning to each and every single one of you. It is such a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. I think it's been maybe about 12 months uh, for me. I have still been able to, to get my praise and my worship on from the comfort of my own home. Hopefully you guys have been able to do the same. And uh, just on my journey, I want to say for the last 12 months, um, the seed for more. Um, the seed for more. How do you receive more in your life? Um, more blessings. And, and it's, it's with gratitude. It's with being grateful unto him for everything that he's done in spite of the pandemic, in spite of 2021. It's so easy for each and every single one of us to be distracted, for us to be discouraged, for us to just simply just go down the wrong path versus the right path. So what we're here um, today to say is simply thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, my dad, my mom, my sister, my brother. We are extremely grateful for each and every single one of you, for who you've been in our lives and what you've done for us. We do not take it for granted. And please, everything that you do, move it forward. Don't take people for granted. Don't take the blessings of God for granted. Be grateful in spite of, again, thank you, each and every single one of you from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. Amen. And so we're, we're once again so ever so grateful, ever so thankful, even in times like these. And, and in times like these, uh, you find out who your real friends are. Amen? Yeah. You find out who's going to be there for you. Amen? Um, my sorrow is here and her family, the dance family. So good to see you all. So thankful to have you all here as well. But once again, you find out who your real friends are. Now, when I called Pastor Samson, he could have said, Pastor. You know there's a pandemic, but that, that's, that's not what he said. Pastor Samson was glad to come. He hasn't missed a year in so many years, and, and he has filled us. He has blessed us every year that he's come tremendously. A tremendous man of God, an awesome man of God. Um, one that I can truly say, I not only look up to his preaching, but I look up to his life. Amen? Amen. And Pastor Samson, he's taught me a few things. Amen? First thing he taught me was, you ought, as a pastor, you ought to have a beautiful wife. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen. And so we're great. So without further ado, I want to bring up the man of God who's going to preach the word of God on today, none other than Dr. F.D. Samson. Won't y'all stand and give him a warm hand of applause as he comes to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ.
the goal. And the challenge that this pandemic has brought presents even a greater reason for acknowledging the pastoral ministry. For there have been many physical, emotional, and spiritual needs made known and manifested through this pandemic, which calls for an engaged ministry that is different, I'll use that word, because of the guidelines that have been set in place so I salute you, Pastor Stenson, because of the commitment and the devotion that you have to humanity and the concern that is manifested in the welfare of the community. And today I am to talk to you about four words. Four words. Come on, Pastor. That we will find in the book of Second Timothy. In the first chapter of Second Timothy. And I want to thank this man. Marvelous music ministry today from the singers and this fine assembled group of musicians. There in Second Timothy, the first chapter in the 16th verse is where you will find the Lord give mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. And I'm to talk to you, Joaquin, for these four words, he oft refreshed me. Yeah. He oft refreshed me. Yeah. He oft refreshed me. We would, we would say he often refreshed me. Apostle yeah. Paul in this letter to Timothy, this, this letter to Timothy, his son in the ministry is seemingly highlighting one who had been kind to him and who was not ashamed of identifying with him. He points up this particular character by the name, name of Onesiphorus as an example of the kind of courage one should have. Timothy or Timotheus, who is known as Timothy, struggled with what his name suggests, a timidity, a kind of 
timidness or lack of cover. Uh -huh. A kind of subtle fear. Okay. And Paul points up this particular person who no doubt was a member of the church of Ephesus. Ephesus being one of the seven churches of Asia that's referred to in the book of Revelation. Ephesus in Asia, the church of Ephesus in that time was known as the body of believers. There is no more a church at Ephesus today. Asia then is now Turkey. But in that region of Asia, that was an Asian by the name of Onesiphorus, who was kind to Paul. Onesiphorus is not to be confused with Onesimus. Onesimus was once a servant of Philemon who ran away and ran into Paul and got converted and Paul wrote a letter back to Philemon saying he's coming back and I want you to receive him back not this time as a servant but as a brother. And if he owes you anything, put it on my bill. Yes, sir. Yes. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about Onesimus. Neither are we talking about Epaphroditus, who was a delegate from the church of Philippi, who carried a love package to Paul. Mm -hmm. But this is Onesiphorus. Now, in the reading, in the reading of commentators, some suggest that by this time that Paul wrote this, Onesiphorus was dead. Yet we have this prayer that Paul prays in this 16th verse that God would give mercy to the house of Onesiphorus. Whether Onesiphorus was alive or dead is debatable and not necessarily worthy of the argument. But what is important is what Paul had to say about Onesiphorus. And that is that he oft refreshed me. He often, not just once, but often refreshed me. He often brought me a source of refreshment, of, 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 of regaining a kind of, of strength to persevere. He often refreshed me, gave to me a type of recreation a type of encouragement, yeah. something that gave me a desire to push forward more. Wow. He ought, Paul says, he ought refreshed. Yes, sir. And, and he goes on, he goes on to say that even when I was in Rome, he did not do what he did for me in refreshing me just when I was in Ephesus in his presence. But when I was in Rome, a prisoner, yes, Onesiphorus took a voyage because to go from Asia to Italy 
had to, you had to cross several waters. You understand? Mm -hmm. It was it was something that you had to uh, uh, bravely embrace the dangers of the water to go across maybe the Mediterranean or some other sea to reach Italy yeah. and then into Rome. Yes, sir. And once in Rome, which was a metropolis, to search, he says, he found me. Oh, it was not the easiest thing to find somebody in Rome. It's like when I'd gone to some places and uh, people find out I'm from Houston, they say, do you know my cousin? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I don't know. What's your cousin's name? His name Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, in a large city um, like Rome, to try to find one person yes, sir. would be a difficult thing. Yes, sir. And, so, and so Paul says, when he was in Rome, he made the trip to Rome, and he found me. Yes, sir. which says and suggests that he had an affinity, he had a respect, he had a love for Paul. He, was, he had a concern for the welfare of Paul. Yeah. And then, on top of that, My God. Paul was a prisoner. Mm -hmm. And as a prisoner, Romans did not think well of anyone who was kind to prison. So, Onesiphorus not only endangered his life to take the voyage across the sea to find Paul, but once he arrived in Rome, he searched diligently until he found him, and when he found that he was a prisoner, yes, sir. he further risked his life and took the chance of being stormed or rebuked or in some other way mishandled because he wanted to do something good for a person who was not very popular. But Paul says, the Lord give mercy My God. to the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me. In other words, Paul was saying, this man, Onesiphorus, has been so kind to me when I was in his presence in his hometown. And when I went and left his hometown, he took the risk of his life on, a, in, on, a, on the sea, in a barge, on a ship, or a boat, to find me just for the purpose yes, sir. of refreshing me. So today, we read about Paul and his wish for the house of Onesiphorus. That not only Onesiphorus, but even his household would benefit from the blessings of God because Onesiphorus often refreshed him. And so today, as we make the application Today is a day that we will refresh Reverend Robert Simpson and his wife. Because there is a blessing, you understand, through reciprocity from the Lord to those who will refresh the man of God. Mm -hmm. Can we say and may we say, we should say, or we should be able to say to every household of Pilgrim Journey Missionary Baptist Church, may the Lord give mercy mm -hmm. to that household because they ought refresh. It does mean something. 
It does mean something to care for the one who puts himself in the way of those who would reject him or who would in some way or another disrespect But those who would respect him join together today. I understand there's going to be a parade. And there are those who hear me now through the World Wide Web, if you're in the vicinity, here is a great opportunity for you to refresh past the sense to be in that parade. But not only to be in that parade, but to have something in your hand. You understand? To refresh the man of God. I came today to preach, but I came with something to refresh the man of God. And you can refresh him. Text him from time to time to let him know you're thinking about him. Send an email. Write a letter. Send an offering. Make a telephone call. If you can't get him, leave a voice message. I'm just thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Refresh. Yes, yes. Him often. 17, 18 years is a big number of years to serve. And I am confident that he's wrought well and is worthy of being refreshed. Amen. And so, on this particular day, this 17th day of January 2021, this cool, sunshiny day. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. A day of refreshment. Yeah. When I think about refreshing the man of God, I think about the time that Jesus Christ was in the wilderness and was tempted of Satan. And the Bible says there in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4 around about verse 11 that while he was uh, in that light of temptation angels came and strengthened him. That strengthening of him in this period when he had spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting, this strengthening him of a form of refreshment so that he could go on from there. Then I think about when he had instituted the Lord's Supper and had gone to the Mount of Olives and on the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane. There in agony, as he prayed, Father, if it be possible, move My God. this cup from me. And the Bible said in that 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, that an angel came from heaven and ministered under him. And I believe that there was a form of refreshment. Yes, yes. And through these two instances of being strengthened and angel ministering under him, it was like unto being refreshed. Uh -huh. Even after his being refreshed or strengthened during the time of temptation, yes, sir. that he moved on from there and began his public ministry. Mm -hmm. And in carrying on his public ministry, 
this. You will read of him performing miracles yeah. Yeah, yeah. after miracles. Mm -hmm. I believe that the, the angel strengthening him was essential and uh, important and is not to be overlooked. And, and he performed miracles. Yes, sir. Yeah, he did what he did for others. His ministry was for others and for the benefit of others. So when you refresh the servant of God, you position him to be able to minister for the benefit of others. Yes, yes. When you yeah, refresh the man of God, it is likened to the angels who ministered unto Jesus. Yes. In the garden of uh, Gethsemane, uh -huh. when yes, the angels uh, ministered unto Jesus, uh, he was in uh, ready to go on to fulfill the master's will. Yeah. yeah. But prior to that, uh, he had said, uh,
me. Let us so refresh pastor today that it may be said by him of us, he or she ought to refresh me.
keep you as my tribe. Thank you again, Pastor Simpson, for this invitation. Thank you again to the musicians. Thank you for your prayers and receiving me. And I pray you have a wonderful day and a marvelous year throughout this year as God at his own time delivers us. Shall we stand? bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his covenant upon you. May the Lord give you peace is my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ I do pray. Amen.